People often ask me how I color grade my C70 footage to get my images to look so cinematic. The truth is, it's way simpler than you might think. Given the right knowledge and tools, you can get great looking images out of the C70 fast and easy. So in this video, I will show you exactly how to go from this to this. For this example, I will use Final Cut because this is what I use to edit and color grade with. But whatever I'm showing you right now, you can easily recreate in either Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve. For this little color grading tutorial, I will show you three different looks. One that is really filmic and cinematic. The other one is more of a commercial look. And the third one is a mixture of both. Quick disclaimer, when I film with my Canon C70, I film almost everything in C-Log2 with the Cinema Gamut color space. And if you want to know all my settings, I made a full video about this on my channel, which I will link up here. Let's start with the shot of my friend Megan and try to apply somewhat of a commercial look to it. After importing this file straight into Final Cut, we can see that it looks gray and gray because we're displaying the log footage. So the first thing we want to do is we want to convert this into a Rec. 709 color space. And the way that I do this is with Canon's own conversion LUTs and you can find them on their website and I will link them down in the description below. The way we do this in Final Cut is we go to the Inspector tab, then we switch from Basic to Extended and under Camera LUT we can apply the Cinema Gamut Canon Log 2 to BT709 Wide Dynamic Range LUT. And as you can see this looks a lot better already straight out of camera and this is why I love the Canon C70 so much. But it's obviously not perfect yet so let's start with the basic color correction. The one tool that we need for basic color correction as well as basic color grades is the RGB waveforms. And you can display those in Premiere, Final Cut as well as DaVinci Resolve. And when I refer to color correction and color grade, I mean two different things. Color correction is basically what it sounds like. We will correct our colors, exposure and contrast levels. Whereas when I talk about a color grade, we will add a custom style to our image. When applying our color correction, we will use our color wheels. And the first thing we were going to do is we're going to correct our exposure. And we do this by raising the highlights. As you can see here on our RGB waveform, we were a little bit underexposed. So we're bringing up our highlights all the way so that we're close to around 100. The next thing we need to do is we need to bring down our shadows. And here you can see that the midtones in the middle of the image where our character is, we are a little bit overexposed. So we're bringing down the shadows and therefore create a little bit more contrast. And for this image, that's it already for our color correction. If you look at the before and after, we added a little bit of contrast, we corrected the exposure and that's pretty much all we needed to do. But we shot this at the right white balance so we don't have to correct any colors and it looks good straight out of camera already because, well again, I love the Canon C70. As a next step, we are going to apply one of our custom LUTs that I created especially with the Canon C70 in mind. So we're applying our custom LUT and then we can choose between Canon version 1 and Canon version 2. And one of my favorite LUTs of all time is Bluebird and I use this for about 90% of my YouTube videos. After applying this, this obviously looks way too strong. So we need to dial this way back. So we go from zero and add a little bit more of this grade in here. As you can see, we added even more contrast to our image and we gave the whole video a bit more of a vibe. For the most part, we could already leave it at that. And that was pretty easy. We corrected the colors a little bit. We added one of our custom LUTs and this is how I color grade about 80% of our footage if it's for a quick turnaround YouTube video or even sometimes for client videos. But to make this image look even better, we want to change two more things that bother me right now. Number one, the colors are overall a little bit too bluish for my taste, so let's add a little bit of orange into the midtones. Let's add another color wheel to it, and then we go to the midtones and push a little bit of orange into the midtones. And here we need to be careful to not mess up her skin tones, because if we go too much towards the green and yellow, everything looks a little bit sick. And if we go too much to the magenta and purple, then her skin tone doesn't look right either. So let's find the middle ground where her actual skin tone lies and this should be somewhere around here. And you can check your skin tones by switching from your waveforms to your vector scope. And this line right here is our skin tone line and this is where the orange should lie. And we pretty much nailed it already, but I can show you that if we were moving towards the green or move towards the red too much, then we're straying off too much from our skin tone line and we don't want that so we try to find the skin tones that lie right in the middle of our skin tone line 
Looking at the before and after, this was a little bit too bluish and it was a little bit too cold for my liking. So now we added in more color into the midtones and got this warm commercial look. There's one more thing that bothers me and this is by adding our custom LUT, we introduced a lot of saturations to the shadows. And you can easily spot this on her top because where the shadows are, this is supposed to be white or at least black, but it's way too blue. And you can also spot this in her eye color because the white of her eyes is now a little bit bluish. And the way we battle this is by adding a hue and saturation curve. And here we can easily remove the blue from her shirt. Unfortunately, there's a lot of other blue colors in the image like the sky or her pants. And we only want to affect her top and her eye color. So we need to create a mask. So we're adding a shape mask and we loosely just target her upper body. And then we use the tracker function, which is new in Final Cut Pro. 10.6 we analyze the footage here we go that was quite easy and then we click done and the next step we're going to do is we're going to use the u versus saturation curve we're going to tackle the blue that is on her shirt and then we're going to get rid of it completely and here we can see the before and after the blue is completely gone from her top as well as from her eye color Looking at the overall before and after, I really like the image we created, but when looking back at it, I think that we overdid it a little bit with the contrast, so we can just bring our shadows up a bit more. And there we go. This is how I like my image. Going from this to this. One last thing we can do is since the Canon C70 sensor isn't the sharpest, we can add a little bit of sharpening. And I just use the onboard sharpening that we have within Final Cut. I set the value to one because this is what I found works best with the Canon C70. And there you go, you have a bit sharper image now. The clip that I reviewed before was shot outdoors at daylight without any kind of artificial lighting. So let's see if we can apply the same techniques to an indoor shot that is very well lit. Here's our shot straight out of camera. We already applied our conversion LUT. So let's start with our basic color correction. And as we can see on our RGB waveforms, we already lie exactly where we are because again, this was a well lit, thought out commercial shoot. So the exposure level is actually pretty decent already. If we were to push the highlights up, then we would clip the highlights on these spotlights right here, which we don't want to do. We could just bring up his exposure by just creating a mask again, which we're going to do real quick. So we add our shape mask again, put it right in the middle, reform it a little here around his character. And we can track it, although he's not moving too much, but let's just track it, why not? That's what we have this for. Click done, and then we can apply the same techniques. And as you can see on the RGB waveforms, we are now only affecting him and his skin tones and not the surroundings. The next step we're going to do is the same as before. We're going to apply one of our custom LUTs. And here we can apply another one. Let's go to version two again, and let's apply brown sugar. And as we can see, this is way too much and we need to tone it down a lot. So we always start from zero and just add in a bit more of our LUTs until we actually like it, which is around right here. Let's see the before and after. We have a rather bland looking image and now we go to having nice contrast, nice exposure levels and we also adjusted the colors a little bit. For me personally, the whole image leans a bit too much towards the magenta side. One easy way to fix this is by adding more color wheels and sliding our tint just ever so slightly to the left, more into the green space. Minus five is too much, minus two, minus three is probably where we want to have it. Looking at the before and after, subtle but it definitely did the trick so now looking at the before and after we went from a rather boring bland looking image to a really nice looking image last but not least let's take one more clip from my upcoming short film documentary cutting edge and the trailer is already up on the channel and you can watch it right here and i will release the full version in two weeks and for this color grade i went a little bit more on the cinematic filmic look so let's see how we achieved this as you can see, we already applied our conversion nut and the only thing we need to do is we need to level up our exposure. The next thing we do, as always, is apply one of our custom LUTs. And the one that I chose for this one is brown sugar. And now, as you can see, it turns the entire image way too teal and this is not what we want to do. So first of all, we're going to just dial it back a bit, just orientate ourselves on the contrast levels and the next thing we do is we push a lot more orange into the midtones. 
So here let's add another color wheel and just push it in. And we go with a lot of saturation here. And we also go a tiny bit on the green side because I feel like this also emphasizes the film look a little bit more. So now looking at the before and after, we went from a really video looking image to a way more filmic cinematic looking image by just emphasizing the brown tones. And this is what the brown sugar lot does. And also pushing a bit of green and orange into our midtones. This already looks pretty good to me, but there's one more thing that I want to apply because the entire scene plays in her past. So I wanted to add some film grain and really emphasize this old color organic film look. And the way that I do this is with a plugin called Film Convert Nitrate. So let's apply it right here and then we can open our controls. And now we have a huge variety of different kinds of film stocks to choose from and also add some grain strength, grain saturation, etc., etc. If I remember correctly, I used the 35 millimeter full frame grain set and the smaller you go, the more grain you will add to your image, but this is a little bit too much for my taste. So let's go with the 35 millimeter full frame. I think the film stock preset that I went with is the FJ8543VD. Yep, that looks about right. Now we can already look at the before and after. So we added a bit of the desaturation from that film stock and we also added grain to emphasize our whole old image look a little bit more. Overall, I think that the plugin added too much contrast so we can dial this back by just decreasing the film luma. As you can see here, this is basically just adding contrast, which we don't want to have because we already did this with our color correction. So we just decrease it all the way to zero. Maybe for this shot, we can also go with a bit more grain strength to around 130. And that's pretty much fine. The grain will probably fall a victim to YouTube compression. So we won't really see this in the final edit, at least not on YouTube. So you can go a bit overboard with this. Just a quick recap. We applied our conversion LUT, then we added a bit of exposure, added brown sugar, one of our custom LUTs, then we push a lot of orange and green into our midtones, and then we added some film grain with the film stock preset, and that's pretty much it. That was quick and easy to get from a video looking image to a really filmic cinematic looking image. If you're interested in one of my Canon custom LUT packs, then there's a link down in the description below. And with the code C70, you can save 10% off your entire purchase. So there you have it. This is how I color grade my Canon C70 footage. And I know this wasn't a full color grading tutorial because I am using LUTs, but I am using my own LUTs 100% of the times to get the best and quick results. And this is exactly what I created the LUTs for. I might release a full color grading tutorial without using LUT in the future for Final Cut Pro 10. So if you're interested in that, then hit the subscribe button because I will announce it here on this channel. I will also do a full color grading video on how I colored the entire film cutting edge that will release in two weeks. So if you're interested in that, again, hit the subscribe button, activate the notification bell. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. And since you're already here, maybe check out one or two more videos about the Canon C70. And I hope to see you on the next one.